Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome my name is Heather and on this channel we like to walk a very fine line between a shopping addicted makeup monster and a responsible adult with a makeup hobby. Now I really enjoy eyeshadow singles, dual chromes, multi chromes, blush, highlight, lip gloss, basically everything except press glitter and today I'm so excited because today I'm going to be doing a palettes regret tag that I came up with myself. So if you have a channel, if you're interested in doing something like this, definitely take my questions, go do this video, please tag me so I can see it. I'd be so excited to see other people do this video. Um, but this is going to be a whole bunch of questions about palettes that I don't own. So we're going to be looking at some pictures <laughs> and then we're going to go from there. Okay. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick with me. We're getting into it right now. So most of what we're going to talk about today is going to be pictures, so hopefully you guys are okay with that. But the first question we're going to talk about is a palette that I regret decluttering. And for me, the first palette that came to mind was the original Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. So it looked like this. And the formula of that one was so like velvety, soft, so beautifully um, blendable. I really loved using that palette. And when Wet n Wild reformulated their 8 pan palettes to 10 pan palettes when they duped out like the um, uh, Modern Renaissance palette that, that era. I got rid of my old comfort zone because I was like, well, it's older, like I'll get the new one. And got the new one and the formula was so much worse. It was drier, it wasn't blending as well, and ultimately I decluttered it. So now I don't have a comfort zone palette at all. Um, but yeah, I definitely, definitely missed that original formula. Question number two palette that you most regret not buying or that haunts your dreams and why you didn't buy it when you had the chance. So for me that is the Melt, Muerte, and Vita palettes and the reason why I didn't purchase them at the time was I had just filmed a video talking about my secrets for how I like save money when I'm purchasing different uh, makeup products and all the tips and tricks that I use um, and so that video is still live if you want to check it out. But one of the things that I talked about in that video is that like pretty much anything that comes out of the makeup industry goes on sale at some point. So it's not like you have to rush out and pay full price for things. And then this launched like weeks later. <laughs> so in my mind, I was like, Heather, use your own advice. Don't buy it full price. Wait till it goes on sale because they were $60 palettes. Um, and so I was like, that's $120 for two palettes. Like, why don't you just wait until they go on sale and then you can get them. And then they sold out. Like, they just sold out. And then everybody was like, oh, I have two new ones on eBay for $500. And I'm like, of course you do. So that was, like, super, super regrets for me. On top of, like, the whole, like, skull imaging, the deep mats. I mean, the whole... I should have just bought it. I'm still upset about it, clearly. Number three. The palette you would buy without hesitation if it came back in stock. The palette that I picked for this was the Beauty Bay Mitchell palette. It was like a two-sided palette. Hopefully I can find a picture and put it up for you. But I thought it had a really interesting colors. Like it wasn't just like a primary rainbow color story. It had really interesting um, tones and shades for the colors that they picked. And I really, really liked the way that they organized it. The reason I didn't purchase it initially is because I was under the impression that... Um, made by Mitchell, whatever his name is, that he's like a good friend with Jeffree Star, who I personally don't support. So I just felt uncomfortable. Like if you're, you know, friends with that particular person, like what does that tell me about your character kind of thing? So I ultimately chose not to buy it. Um, but now, you know, I think it's more important for me personally, at least to sort of vote with my dollar and, and help brands like Beauty Bay when they did this Mitchell palette see, like, I'm willing to buy this palette over here, but I'm not willing to buy any of the Jeffree Star products. So I've kind of changed my, my tune on that a little bit, but I certainly still do not support Jeffree Star. But I think that's a personal decision you have to make. So that's why I missed out on that palette. <laughs> All right. Um, number four, palette that you want for the vibes, but you haven't bought it because you know you won't use it. This is the Huda Beauty Gold Obsessions palette. It was a limited edition nine pan palette that she put out that was predominantly some like warm to neutral kind of shades, pops of pink, pops of gold, and it had lots of like metallic sparkly shades in it. And the cover packaging was like an agate slice. It was very beautifully done. The packaging kills me. I want it so much and I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I had it bookmarked three times in my Mercari account for unused palettes because 
I still kind of want it even though I know I'm not going to use it and I've seen a couple of different websites that talk about like different dupes for that palette as like singles or different um, products within other palettes that I do already own that I definitely don't need this palette but still it still kind of gives me the feels all right so number five this is a palette you regretted so much you would or did overpay for it in order to get it and how much did you or would you pay for me this was the nabla soul blooming palette this came out right as i was getting into makeup and at the time that i was getting into it i couldn't I couldn't justify the cost of the the palette itself I think it was like 38 or 39 dollars something like that at that time I wasn't buying you know super expensive products I didn't quite know what I was doing with color I hadn't like built up a lot of confidence there yet so I kind of was like oh maybe I'll get it eventually it's really pretty but I'll get it eventually and then it started like no longer being available at certain retailers and then I was like well they still have it on their original site so like I can just order it from Italy and pay like the import or whatever and get it and then it was gone like there was no like hey we're you know discontinuing this this is on clearance like it was still regular price and then it was gone and I started freaking out I was like this palette I wanted this palette why didn't I buy it when I had the chance I had so many chances to pick it up and I just didn't I don't know what the heck was wrong with me but then it became like my white whale that I just I needed it and I discovered that W7 made a dupe of the palette so I was like oh I'll just get that that'll satisfy me it didn't. <laughs> that dupe palette I think was like seven or eight dollars. It's still available on Amazon. It's a decent palette but the metallics and duochromes that are in the original palette are just nothing compared to this one. So ultimately I did end up purchasing it um, and had um, I had paid $48 for it. So I think it was about 10-ish dollars more than what the original price was. But yeah that was my uh, couldn't get it on my head palette. <laughs> Alright, palette number, or I'm sorry, question number six. Palette you skipped thinking it was overhyped but now regret. This was the ColourPop Good Sport. I know this palette wasn't super expensive and they've come out with a million bajillion palettes afterwards so you'd think I would have forgotten about it already but I don't. And when people mention it or when they show it in their declutters and their collection videos and they talk about it, I just kind of like the wound gets cut back open you know what I mean like I wish I could get that one um, still but it's long gone and I think at some point if I wanted it I would just make it out of some singles and get those from different um, brands but yeah that one I regret number seven this is a palette you skipped because of import fees taxes shipping or some additional cost that you talked yourself out of it but now regret and I actually had two palettes for this one. One was the Lois Cosmetics Meet Me in the Underworld palette, which is this really beautiful, like, pink and green color story. I actually did a whole video talking about different palettes that I had in my own collection already that kind of duped out the vibes. And I talked myself out of it, but there are still times when I look at that palette or I look at, you know, eye looks that people have done with that palette and I'm like, dang it, I wish I had that palette. <laughs> So that's the first one and I talked myself out of it because the taxes and the shipping to get to the US I think the shipping was going to be about $20 for a palette that was already going to cost me close to um, $45 or $50 after tax so I was going to end up paying about $60 to $70 for a palette from a brand I didn't know anything about so at the time that's why I decided not to pick it up. And then the other one is the Menagerie Violet Ink, the little six pan palette that looked like the little octopus. Um, and it's a really beautiful, cool tone purple color story, which of course we're not seeing as much of as I had personally hoped for and prayed for this year, but whatever, I'll get over it eventually. Um, but the, the palette I think was a really beautiful palette. I ultimately, at the time, had not tried Menagerie Cosmetics yet, so I wasn't sure I was ready to sort of take a gamble there. Um, and so I opted against the palette because the actual palette itself I think was about 20 bucks but then to get it shipped was like another eight or nine dollars plus tax and I was like okay so this is like a thirty dollar six pan palette like it just didn't make sense to me so I decided not to get it and now it's retired you can still get it as singles though but I think I have enough purple palettes in my collection now that I can kind of like talk myself off the ledge so I haven't picked any of those up all right question number eight this is a palette that came out before you got into makeup that you wish you owned and for me, this was the Paulina Beauty um, 
Blush Tribe collaboration palette. It was like purples, pinks, greens, and I thought it had a really pretty, like vibrant color story. I definitely thought that was a really eye-catching palette. I did end up getting one of the other Blush Tribe palettes shortly before they announced they were going out of business, and then I never did pick up anything from Mayali, which was their like second brand that they came out with. Um, but that palette definitely, I'm like, ooh, I wish I had it. But the Angelic and Ink Fist and Hella. Um, Angelica Ink Fist and Odin's Eye Hella palette kind of gives me that same like green and pink so I just need pops of purple to pull in to kind of create that same type of vibe so I don't think I necessarily need to like chase that one down anymore but yeah definitely wish I could have gotten that one and then um, number nine is a collab palette that you regret missing out on so this one was um, kind of tricky for me but the uh, palette that I picked out was the Amy Hearts Beauty and Amy Loves Makeup Collab palette, which was the Alma palette. Very beautiful, cool toned, pink, purple, blue color story. It actually came out and on its, I guess, last run, they had started doing it as singles, and I tried to order it as singles, not knowing anything about the drama of the brand or anything that had happened. I just thought the color story was very, very pretty. And ultimately, I waited, I think, two or three months. And I never got my product. I had to do a complaint with Better Business Bureau and PayPal and get my money back. And it was like a whole circus. Um, so yeah, that brand is definitely like, I'm glad they're gone. They deserve to be gone. Um, and it sucks because Amy Loves Makeup is such a like sweet like uh, video channel to watch. So that was kind of disappointing that that all went so far south. Um, but yeah, definitely I regret missing that one. I will say I curated kind of my own version of that palette, and I really do like that version of the palette too, so all is not lost. <laughs> Alright, number 10 is a collab palette you thought you'd regret missing out on, but you don't. And this one really surprised me because I thought I was going to regret the Elf and Chipotle collab not having it. I am a Chipotle stan, like die hard, give it to me any day of the week, right? When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I had Chipotle probably once or twice a week, like no fail. There was a day that I was home from work um, that my husband was not home. I was home all day, and that that day, every lunch, I would go and get Chipotle. It was perfect. Um, and so when they did the collab, I was like, yes, I'm going to buy everything. I want it. I want it. And when it came out, the palette launched, and I was like, this palette actually doesn't really speak to me at all. It's very neutral. It's very soft. I didn't think the metallics were going to be terribly vibrant. And I did get the vibe from a lot of the reviews that I watched. I will say I regret missing out on the avocado sponges because those were adorable. And the makeup bag that looked like a chip bag. That definitely was like right up my alley. But the other stuff, I definitely don't feel any sadness over missing it. But I thought I was going to. All right. And number 11, this is the collab you regret does not exist. I actually came up with <laughs> three answers for this question. The first one that immediately came to mind for me was Lauren May Beauty and Odin's Eye. With them doing this legendary Diversa collection where they're starting to collab with different creators, they've done Annette's Makeup Corner, they did Tina the Fancy Face, they've done It's Judy, um, and Angelic Neek Fist. I think Lauren May Beauty would fit perfectly within that collection. She has such a good eye for different textures and different finishes and eyeshadows, and she's really good at putting color stories together. So I think her her eye with Odin's Eyes formulas would be a perfect match. I would love to see that come out. The second one that I thought of was Bupin. And I, you know, I have her Shroud palette, which I think is a gorgeous palette. But I was kind of like, who else would I want to see her collab with? Because she just has such an interesting mind for colors and color placement and textures and how everything works together. And the, the brand that I kind of settled on that I think would be most interesting to see from her was actually Melt Cosmetics because she has tried I think most of the Melt palettes that have come out and has liked all of them so she seems to be very capable of working with their formulas despite the fact that they do have you know sort of variations in their formulas you know from palette to palette so I think that would be a really cool and interesting color story that she would come up with I I couldn't even fathom what the theme would be but I think that would be a really cool collab to see 
And then the last one that I came up with was an indie one, and this is Bad to the Brow and Davina Cosmetics. Davina Cosmetics has stolen my heart. They have beautiful iridescent glitter type multi-chromes. They have some um, just like pastel multi-chromes. They've got some standard like more jeweled multi-chromes. They have beautiful, very interesting matte shades and undertones. They've got beautiful shimmers. And Bad to the Brow is quite talented not only with her eye looks but having sort of that eye for you know what's similar to what's already been done so I think she would be able to develop something that's really unique and special um, and with Davina's formulas I think that would be a phenomenal pairing and number 12 this is the brand that you regret not trying yet and what I put down here was Game Beauty. So Game Beauty has released a bunch of like video game themed um, products. I used to play some like computer stuff whenever I was younger with my dad um, and really enjoyed that. So that kind of spoke to me on that level even though the games that she's representing are not really games that I played myself. I really like the concept. I think the palette that I'm most drawn to is her first one, the Adventure palette, but it has a pressed glitter in it, so I've kind of talked myself out of it because I'm so tired of pressed glitters, but her other palettes that she's released, especially the Harbinger palette, and there was like that frosty blue one. What was that called? I can't remember what that one's called, but that one also. Pretty much everything but the Victory palette I've been very intrigued by and wanting to pick up, but there's... I haven't had a strong enough pull to actually go onto the website and make a purchase based on the cost because I think the palettes run about $45 um, and then of course you get to pay shipping so for me I just haven't the the desire hasn't overwhelmed the cost factor yet but I, everything that they put out I'm always so interested I love the new highlighters that they put out I think they look so interesting and beautiful like different colors I think that's awesome and they seem like subtle enough that you could probably get away with them you know not just at like Coachella but just you know kind of on a regular day-to-day -day basis so I definitely am keeping my eyes on them I regret that I haven't like tried anything from them yet but maybe in the future okay Woo! all right and I want to thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this tag if you have a channel definitely sit down and do these questions I will try to leave them in a um like a text box down below um, but definitely give this a try tag me in it so I can check out the video too I want to thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe before you go and I'm going to catch you in my next video bye